Hey guys, what is up? Sorry for the uber long delay between um, my last video and this video. I had finals week going on, wanted to get through that, finish up the semester strong. Um, and now that we're done with that, we can get on to an episode. But before we jump into anything, um, I had a couple requests on what to do. Um, one of the requests was animation, another was parallax scrolling, and I do plan on hitting those, and I actually haven't dealt too much with either one. I've done some stuff with parallax scrolling, but um, this is the actual example in front of you is the first time I've used animation. Um, I actually, uh, those, these images are not mine, um, I got them from opengameart.org. And um, once I put this together, I decided I wanted to learn shaders. And if you don't know what a shader is, they're pretty awesome. It requires at least OpenGL 2.0. And basically, um, it allows you to fully program the rendering pipeline, which, when you say it, sounds pretty cool and fancy. But um, you see right here, I'm using the default shader, which is what we're using with our game but I can actually change it and all of a sudden the colors are inverted. Um, basically I have full access to every single vertex and pixel that is being rendered to the screen and I can change its color. So here I did something grayscale. So I mean you can see that there are uh, the, the, the possibilities are endless. Um, pretty much every game that you play, if you play any AAA titles, shaders are used to create um, you know, the, the way water moves, it makes it look like it's moving even though it's it's not. Uh, that's a shader. Um, when you see, uh, like, um, uh, are ref would reflections be part of a shader? I believe reflections would be a lot of lighting is done via shaders. If you ever play Battlefield, the lens flare is a shader. Well, pretty much any game that has lens flare, but... Battlefield has that over-the-top uh, lens flare and, and all that stuff. So um, that gives you an idea. We'll maybe go over these at some point. They're rather complex. Um, it took me a long time to really understand them, and I still don't, I haven't, you know, understood all of it. But this is what I've done so far. Um, I also managed to get a uh, an edge detection shader, which pretty much like outlines the edge of every texture um, up and running on this. Um, that I, I can't take credit for that. I took the algorithm and everything off the internet and kind of played around with it till it worked. But that gives you an idea. Now today, we're going to be doing this stuff. Uh, this is a particle editor. And if you go to code.google.com slash p slash libgdx slash wiki slash particle editor, it will be right there. I will put the link in the description. And uh, when you open it up, this is what you're going to get. And... Uh, in case you didn't guess, we're actually going to be using um, dynamic particles as um, what's the what's the right word I'm looking for to um, to make the exhaust. And I've already put together, you know, uh, fan dangled with the output. Um, you can see that this is the default that you're going to get. It's going to look like this. But what we actually want it to look like is if you actually when you get done, it's actually going to look like this because remember we have ours zoomed in so far that um, you know it's it looks. What is going on? It it, um, the, it is only going to look this small. So um, I'm using a 10 by 10 circle um, that I put together in Photoshop. So if anyone wants to just make their own to use, you can do that. But uh, I didn't mess around with the count. I did mess around with, um, let's see, what did I change? I changed the size. Well, to give you an idea, let's see. Uh, the size is actually going to be dynamically modified um, in the code. Um, velocity, I changed a lot. <laughs> um, in, uh, when it starts up, it'll be like 30 and 300. I have it at 0 0.1 and 2. Uh, the angle is also going to be changed programmatically uh, while we're doing this. And the part, yeah, 
yeah, and I changed the tint. Um, you can change it to whatever you want. Um, when I do it like this, it's going to look like a kind of a cool blue uh, flame that's like white hot in the center. So you can do whatever you want with that. And then I have it set to continuous, and I left additive checked. So that is pretty much everything that's going to be changed. And let's dive into the code. Um, I'd started this episode and then kind of got interrupted, and so I had to stop. So some of the stuff is already done. Um, in that time, I'll show you what I changed. I added a public static final Boolean debug. Um, it's a Boolean called debug. To, I set it to true. Um, basically what this is going to let us do is anytime we're doing stuff that's like debugging type kind of stuff, um, like we have here where we're rendering a, uh, we ha we're using a shape renderer. Um, basically I just surrounded this in an if statement and said, you know, if debug is true, then we can go ahead and render that stuff. Um, also I just remembered we have a wee bug, um, and that would be in the world, I believe, is where I put it. Um, where we're actually updating this stuff. Um, we're actually updating the bullets and the uh, enemies, right? Next, yeah. So we're going to get rid of that, and to fix this, um, all we need to do is make another iterator, or just set uh, b iter equals. Probably not going to be the most efficient way to do it, but it'll work. Um, and it'll get rid of our little bug that we had where it would only update the enemies if we had a bullet there. Um, did we have it as up? Let's see, it would be update, correct? Yes. Date with the ship. And then we'll just do the same thing with the enemy iterator. Again, we'll, we'll optimize this later. It's There are a lot of things I see wrong with doing it this way for, for now. Alright. Now that should fix our little bug. I don't want to... I'm not going to run it because... Uh, I still have the particles in there. So we're going to go to our renderer. And basically, uh, once you have your uh, render, your um, your effects set up, you just click on save and it'll give you a little file. Um, this is what the file looks like. I just threw it in our data and assets, which is also getting very disorganized and will probably need to be uh, fandangled with a little bit. But... Um, this is what I where I was editing the um, our velocity and stuff because I had to change it around because it was way too fast and it still might e might even need changed a little bit but um, for now we'll leave it like this um, let's see so what else did I add I in case you didn't notice I decided to start commenting. Um, I started with the render method and I'll hopefully get through all the code at some point or another. But um, once you have that, you're going to need to take that image that you um, used and throw it in your data folder. And actually I'm going to rename this from ball to refactor rename. Save that to um, particle.png and then I'm actually going to have to change it to particle here. And um, it had trouble finding the file, so I had to manually set the sprite through the uh, through the thing here. So basically what I did is I said the exhaust is a new particle emitter. 
and then in a try catch statement um, I used a buffered reader and um, I just because the the load takes a uh, takes a buffered reader so I had to take the file handler and then um, turn it into a buffered reader get the buffered reader from it and with uh, 200 and with a 2024 buffer size I didn't do the calculations I kind of guessed on that it could be uh, that could be killing everything so it, it works for now so I guess that's all that matters right so um, we have our particle emitter uh, exhaust up here. Then the actual um, constructor takes a blank parameter. Then in our load method, sorry, I got like distracted and skipped around a whole lot before, but now we're going through it. Uh, the load method takes a buffered reader. We gave it the file handler. Reader gives us a buffered reader. Um, we have to do it in a try catch and we're not really doing anything to, s to fix it if there's an exception, but um, well, it's not always good practice, but it works for us for now. Uh, then we're taking the ball texture, and we're, we're loading that, and then the sprite constructor takes a ball texture, and then we're setting the sprite, and then we're actually uh, setting the max size of the particle to actually 0 0.3. I don't know if you saw earlier, but we actually had it at 10, so we're, we're having to scale it down even further. Um, but then, uh, to start dealing with the particle, in our render method, we're setting the position to the center of the ship, um, which is, you know, fairly simple to do. You just uh, get the X position, which is the get the X and the Y, which is the bottom left-hand corner, move it right half the width and up half the height. So that's all we're doing. Um, Exhaust.start starts the particle, and I don't know if... I don't know if I actually should call start there. Maybe I should call start up here. Let's see if that makes a difference. Um, I feel like calling start every frame is kind of silly. Um, then once we do that, I created a method called set exhaust rotation because if you saw on that one, it was only pointing up. So I told you programmatically we would go ahead and change that. So here's how we're actually doing it. Um, the angle between the, the, the particle and the ship are actually slightly different. So what we actually do is we take the ship rotation and then to uh, get, the, get the center point, um, of the opposite direction, we, we add 270 degrees, and then we just um, set the the spread to 45 degrees to one side and 45 degrees to the other side, um, and we can change that, do whatever, and that should look fairly nice. Um, should, I hope. Um, okay, so then once we do that, all we have to do to get it to draw is just call exhaust.draw, send it our sprite batch, which we already we have to call begin before, make sure you put it after the begin, and then set it the delta time. And then let's see if we run this, what we've got. So there you can kind of see what it looks like. Um, it's kind of cool with, I think it's kind of cool using a dynamic, a kind of dynamic particle system like that. And then I think it looks kind of cool when the ship's idling. So we've got that. And that's, you know, we've got the, that's what I was talking about, the blue with the kind of white um, in the middle. It actually kind of looks like the way it's moving, like it's fiery. So I think that it's pretty cool. And then as you go, since you're constantly moving, it makes the particles look like they're not spreading out quite as far, but they really are. Um, so, yeah. Um, that was a whole lot faster than I had planned it to be, I guess, because I had already written out all the code and had to start over. But we we actually got quite a bit done. We fixed the air that we were we had, I think. Um, actually, no, we actually didn't. We need to say 
move this. Up into the enemies. Right there. Now let's try this, and it will actually tell us when we get, get hit this time. There we go. And now we can move around, shoot up that, and then if we actually go into the Angry Masons thing, the main, the starter, and change this to false, you'll see that we don't have these squares uh, rendered over everything. And when we shoot, bullets go flying out. Um, and I might change the bullets just a little bit. Maybe um, give them a bit of a glow or something. Make them look more missile-y, I suppose. And probably make it so that they don't come out from the bottom left-hand corner here. But, yeah, that's... Uh, you know what? We have time. Let's go ahead and change where the bullets come out. Um, I forget exactly where we do that, but let's go to, um, it's not our view, let's go to our input handler and see when we click what we're doing here. I kind of forget. Um, add bullet, we have a new bullet. Okay, so instead of doing setting it to the X, let's do what we did with the particle and get width divided by 2 plus ship dot get height divided by 2 this still looks kinda weird the way they're shaped when they're coming out from the side it makes them look you know what that'll be fixed when we actually add a, a, a background because that's what makes it look like they're traveling almost um, instead of traveling straight across it looks like they're kind of sloping at the wrong direction from where they're traveling and that'll be fixed with a background so when we start doing some parallax kind of stuff um, we'll fix all that right now we've got this uh, you know fancy exhaust I think it looks pretty good if you ask me um, but yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed this and the uh, I will see you guys in the next episode, which definitely won't take as long to come out. I promise that, because I am on break, and uh, we're good to go. So, I will see you guys later.